So welcome to part two of my craft room tour. I'm hoping that you have already watched part one. So we're now going to get into the other side of my room for part two. So moving on onto the other side of my room, I have this built-in cupboard here. Um, I can't actually store anything in it, unfortunately. So there's a little bit of um, sort of wasted space, but it's there. There's not much I can do about it. This is a, another item that I bought just recently when I redecorated. This is a Hemonies unit, again from Ikea. And I got the one with the doors on, the glass doors. And they're kind of partial glass, so glass at the top and then the bottom part is all covered up. Really, really love this unit. Um, I guess it wasn't the cheapest of units, but um, if you didn't want the doors on it, it is a lot cheaper. So right at the top, um, this is really quite a tall unit. I am short, but this is tall nonetheless. Um, so right at the top, I don't know how well you can see, I've got two embellishment boxes. They are from Cropper Hopper. I'm not going to get them down because I do have to get on a ladder to get them. Um, so I'm not going to get them down, but I do share what's in them in other craft room tours because they used to be under my old cabinet. Um, but in there I just have rolled up ribbon and like off cuts and things like that. I have embroidery floss and some twine and things like that. So moving down, um, as I said, onto the unit. I'm just going to share with you right at the bottom of the unit there's a gap. And in there, in that little gap, I have wooden blocks and um, blocks like, like that kind of thing. Uh, mainly for photography purposes. So moving into the actual unit here, I'm just going to open the doors, um, the wrong way around. <laughs> so in here I've got all of my stamp sets. So right at the top I have these boxes here from Ikea again. And um, it's a little bit difficult for me to kind of show you um, these that well because again I'm on the short side and this is quite a tall unit. So. I have my large stamp sets here at the top. So this, um, in the first box here, I have my paper tray ink stamps. And on tiptoes, I can actually get the things out of them. So the st my paper tray ink stamp sets are in these storage binder sleeves from Tim Holtz. They used to sell them quite a long time ago and then they discontinued them, but I believe in the last couple of months, they've just actually bought them back. So all of my paper tray ink stamps are in these. Um, paper tray ink stamps uh, used to come in CD cases. I don't believe that they still do now, but I haven't actually bought any for a little while. And so I didn't like them in the CD cases and I wanted them in a different solution. So I put them between two sheets of acetate. Um, as far as I'm aware, apparently now that's not a good thing to do. You're not really supposed to stick them on acetate, um, at least photopolymer stamps. Personally, I've had absolutely no problem with these whatsoever. These still work fine. They're not brittle or anything like that. There is a little bit of yellowing on them, but that's from the ink and the cleaners and things that I've used on it. Um, so I, I, I can't really advise you to do this, um, but that is how I store them. But otherwise, these Tim Holtz pockets are really good. They're really, really sturdy, and you can actually fit them in binders as well. So that's that one. And then this next one here is... Um, all of my other larger sets, so all different manufacturers fit in the one box. So I've got quite a lot of MFT sets and then also like the really large all to new sets and ones from the ton and things like that. Um, so this is one of the MFT sets. Um, they, MFT do sell some storage pockets of this kind of size, these taller sort of thinner stamp sets. But um, what I found is that the dies don't fit in there that well if you want to keep them um, connected like how they come basically. So you would have to, um, so that's how they come. So that wouldn't fit in the width of the storage pockets um, that MFT have. But also I really like keeping everything the same. <laughs> I'm just one of those kind of people one of these sort of organizing people I suppose and so I like to have all of my storage pockets the same size so all of the larger sets fit in these larger pockets and then the smaller sets fit in the um, the normal kind of size pockets so um, I just like to have them all the sort of the same so I just label them put a bit of cardstock in for a little bit of stability the white cardstock is really inexpensive white cardstock I really don't use anything nice um, in those and then I just have I said I have my stamp set and then if I have a die set that goes in the back 
So that's those large ones. And then in this one is background. So most of them are six by six background stamps, the kind of cling stamps, although I have one wooden one at the front. And these are in these six by six um, kind of uh, pockets. And they have um, binder holes at the side, which personally it doesn't bother me that they're on there, but you could just cut them off, that out if you wanted to. But these are by We Are Memory Keepers, and I believe that they're for... Um, kind of scrapbooking, 6 by 6 scrapbooking, uh, but again they're really quite sturdy, I just label them, I don't keep white cardstock or anything in them um, because they're absolutely fine, they do fit in quite snugly these cling stamps but they, you can get them in and out quite easily, so I really like that solution and most of those are Hero Arts background stamps in there. So then moving down, on this side I have two more of these IKEA boxes and these are the smaller size boxes and you can probably see these a little bit better. They've got quite a nice sort of um, coating on them I suppose and they're cardboard inside and then on the outside they've kind of got like a straw type um, kind of interlocking thing. Um, so these are all my Christmas stamps in here and this one is empty. And then this is another one of those um, items that I do apologise has been discontinued. So these are DVD boxes from Muji. They did stop selling them a couple of years back. I had absolutely no idea that they'd stopped um, selling them because at the time I had enough. If I'd known in advance, I actually would have bought some more because I really, really like them. They fit the 4x6 um, stamp sets really well in the Avery L storage pockets. So, like I said, it's just a bit unfortunate that they no longer sell them. But um, if you're looking for something similar, I would look for DVD um, sized boxes because, as I said, these fit in perfectly, the DVD size. And um, or there is fridge bins as well that fit stamp sets really nicely. So all of these um, three here are clearly besotted stamps. I am on the design team and because I have quite a lot of them, obviously because I'm on the design team, I tend to separate these by category. So I have sentiments, um, animals, floral, that kind of thing, all in separate categories. And then I just made some dividers. This was an idea from Jennifer Maguire and um, these are basically um, bits of plastic so I believe now she laminates pieces of cardstock but I kept with the plastic because I found some really nice folders that I liked so in America I believe they're called file folders and in the UK they're called swing file folders I believe or swing clip folders they're basically two bits of plastic and then you kind of got a clip at the side that you kind of push down so that it holds the pieces of paper together inside the folder and so I just cut them up I found some really nice ones from Staples. Um, I'm not sure if you can still get them because Staples actually um, no longer trades in the UK in stores. They've gone completely online so um, I do apologise, I'm not 100% sure if you can still get them but um, I really liked them because they're kind of a clear, um, sort of more opaque but um, you know a clear type um, colour so um, so it's not too distracting. So I have those divided and then I just have a piece of white cardstock behind because I didn't used to have my stamps behind glass doors and I was a little bit worried that um, or that they might sort of discolour which to be honest with you isn't a problem, it's not going to damage the stamps but um, it can do sort of after a long long time so I put that little bit of cardstock behind and then for these stamps these 4 by 6 stamps I have them in the kind of normal sized Avery L storage pockets and although clearly Bizotti have stopped selling dies if I do have a die set to match I just pop them um, behind the um, stamp set again some inexpensive white cardstock in there just for stability and then um, label them with a label maker so that's all of those and then I just have the box here with all of the new release in Moving down, these are all of my other manufacturers um, stamp sets. So again, I have them in the Avery L storage pockets and these ones are all separated by manufacturer. I just personally work that way. I know what company has what and it works for me. But if that doesn't work for you, then it might be worth having them in categories again, like all your florals together, all of your sentiments and things like that. Um, so for all these stamps, again, they're in the Avery L um, storage pockets. If I've got a die set to match, they go in the back. Um, and if I haven't, obviously the stamp set is just in there on their own. For the stamping Bella stamps, these are cling stamps, but again, I keep them in the same storage pockets. But for these ones, I just keep the um, the cardboard that comes with it, with the um, image on it, just because I really like how they're coloured in. And it gives you a little bit of inspiration there, so I keep hold of those. 
for any companies that I have just maybe like one or two stamp sets from that company I just store them in a various kind of section so that there's lots of different companies in there if I don't have uh, more than a few of each stamp set from that company. Moving down is my Hero Art stamp sets. Um, so again, I have them in these boxes here from Ikea. And for the Hero Art stamp sets, I keep them in um, catalogue order. So um, the different catalogues, I have them in like that. And again, I have the stamp sets and the die sets together for those. And then this box here has all of my wooden Hero Arts um, stamps in. I do have some other wooden stamps that are not in this cupboard. Um, I haven't used them for quite a long time and I decided to put them away in a cupboard that's um, in my hallway instead of sort of in my craft room. And I'll see sort of when I next use them. And then I've just got um, another box. And this is any new products. So any products that I've bought recently that I haven't shared in a haul video will go in there. Or any products that I need to put away sort of into my system so the next shelf down is all of my cardstock so it's my eight and a half by eleven cardstock although I am in the UK I actually pr prefer to buy American cardstock because it's a lot thicker in weight and so all of it is eight and a half by eleven American sized cardstock and I have them in these uh, magazine files from Muji and I have them in Ziploc pockets so um, let me find one um, so the cardstock itself is in um, the Ziploc pockets, if I can grab hold of it. Um, and I just got 9x12 Ziploc pockets from eBay, cut all the tops off and stuck the cardstock inside. You can fit quite a bit in each pocket. Um, they're not as sturdy as, say, like the um, job ticket holders that Jennifer Maguire uses, but I can't get hold of them in the UK because nothing in that kind of size or anything like that doesn't exist so I just got those um, Ziploc pockets they're absolutely fine they go in and out of these things really well because they're kind of slippery if that makes sense and I do have dividers as well um, I used these dividers before I may put all of the cardstock in these um, pockets because I had my magazine files landscape and so I just had them separately without not being in these pockets so I made all of these dividers and I wanted to keep hold of them because I like to know where everything is. And um, so I could just label the pockets, but then I wouldn't know where it went in the system. Does that make sense? So I have the dividers and then everything stays in those and then um, stays in place, I should say. And then these um, labels are actually removable so I can remove them from the cardstock and they're not going to damage it if I need to. Um, on the end, and this one here is a little bit difficult to see, but I've got all of my Hero Arts um, cardstock and paper. And then I've got things like um, freezer paper, mask paper, tracing paper, <laughs> um, acetate, various different sheets like that. And then back along this side, I've got some watercolour pads and Bristol paper. And then in this little gap here, I've got some foam sheet. And then these are all of my standalone dies. I have them in these... Um, they're folders, they're kind of like um, boxes, box folders I should say, and these are from Crafters Companion. I just have all of my dies in there and I do have a separate video showing um, how they're sort of stored in there. So the bottom shelf, I have quite a lot of these interdesign containers again. So this one here just holds like Novus Cleaner, Copic Cleaner, Rubbing Alcohol, Spray Adhesives, just general sort of things like that. These two here um, are really great because they hold 6x6 six six paper pads really well and I can just sort of pull them in and out of this, um, this shelf here and um, they don't have fronts on them um, but that actually works out quite well because you can kind of flick through them a little bit easier and so I just have dividers again and then if I have a paper pad that I have used little bits out of them usually the things don't fall on the floor but obviously it will for the video um, I just have them in a little kind of pocket thing and um, and then for the MFT ones I take this um, printable you can get it from their website and so I know what colours are in that paper pad um, so they're just all there and like I said, usually they don't fall out as I'm sort of 
getting things out but then I do have two hands usually to be able to do it and then I just have a really useful box and in here has all of my Copic refills and then I've got a yogurt pot at the back if you've taken any of Faye Wynne Jones's um, Copic classes you'll know why you need a yogurt pot and then I've just got attachments for my airbrush system behind there another one of these into design containers I just have a mini dustpan and brush that I use to clean up things a Dymo label maker a um, big bite and then my we are memory keepers envelope punch board next to the Hemneys unit I do have these two units here these are the last two storage units in my room I've had these for quite a long time and um, they're known by two names they're known by either the best organizer or stackables units and they are wooden units and what's really good is they have little kind of pegs in them so that you can rearrange the drawers so the drawers are plastic and you can have paper trays as well which I used to have and you can kind of mix and match everything so you can get different size drawers as you can see and you can just change them about so that's what I kind of really really like about them so I've got two stacked on top of each other they do um, tall units but at the time of buying them I didn't know how I was going to sort of have them so I just stacked one on top of the other so right at the top I have two Cropper Hopper 12x12 magazine files and um, I'm trying to sort of use up my 12x12 paper I haven't bought any in quite a while um, but I have, do, do still have quite a bit left <laughs> um, so I have a lot of Doodlebug 12x12 um, paper or cardstock and then some other sort of Doodlebug pattern papers some um, basil cardstock and some glitter paper and things like that I've got my um Hero Arts catalog. I've got my Windsor and Newton um, watercolor swatches, and then I've got a calligraphy book that I got for my birthday. I'm hoping to get into sort of brush lettering and calligraphy and things. I've got another one of those binders. This one has my stencils in, and I, again, I do have a separate video on that, so I will link that below. And then I've just got a tin here, and this has got embossing folders and sort of larger dies like cover plates and things like that in. So moving down onto this unit here, these drawers hold all of my ink pads. So the first one holds all of my Memento Dew Drops. The next one is Versamagic Chalk Inks and some Brilliance Pigment Inks and just some other sort of chalk and pigment inks there at the back. This one here is all of my Paper Tray Ink Cubes. Next up is the Alter New Ink Cubes and for this one I took one of the inserts out, I don't know how you can see, I took one of the inserts out from the Tim Holtz um, Distress Tins and just temporarily stuck it in there with some temporary adhesive and what's good is that they kind of then stay in place as I'm sort of moving the drawer in and out which is really good. So they're all the Alter New Inks that I have and then I do have some um, Lawn Fawn Cubes as well. This one here is all Hero Arts um, Cubes. The next drawer is actually empty for the time being anyway and then this one here one of the um, bigger drawers this holds all of my um, Hero Arts dye ink pads so I know I'm going to get asked I have absolutely no problem at all having them on their sides none of them have leaked um, again I had absolutely no problems with them being on their sides and I have had it stored like this for quite a few years now um, but I think they do advise that you do not store um, pigment ink on their side. But again, I know people that do and have had no problems. Um, I have my ombre inks there at the back and I do keep them flat. The next drawer here is my MFT dye inks. Um, the MFT hybrid inks, again, I keep them flat because they're a mixture of pigment and dye and I have no problem. They actually fit in quite well in that little gap there. And these are all my Simon Says Stamp dye inks. The next drawer here is Distress Ink, so I have some of the larger Distress Ink um, ink pads that I had before I bought the, started buying the mini cubes. So I have a couple of these ones still that I don't have the cubes for. I don't have the whole collection of the larger ones as you can probably see, but um, I'm keeping hold of them for the time being. And then I also have the, a few of the Distress Oxide inks. These are all of my um, Nuvo crystal drops, so I have them um, in kind of like my colour order, I suppose, and um, really like these. And I have a combination of the the kind of opaque ones, the glitter ones, and sort of the normal ones. And then all these ones here are the dual ones. I have some 
um, stickles and distress stickles and then some enamel accents and then these are all the nouveau glitters this one here is embossing powders so for my hero arts embossing powders i just label the top obviously you can't really see what color they are but that's why i have swatches for everything so i can see what they are and um so I can kind of look for the colour in the swatch book and then go in here and look for them. But to be honest, most of the time I grab hold of the white and the clear. And then the other colours I have, you can just easily sort of read them and that's no problem. The Ranger ones have a clear lid, so that's quite helpful that you can sort of see straight away what the colours are. Again, I label them. The Wow ones, I just flip them over and have the bottom of the kind of tub um, facing upwards again so that I can see the colour really easily but again I label them and then this one here is just some bonding powder that I got um, fairly recently and then these are the Nouveau embossing powders I don't have them labelled mainly because I really like the lids and I don't kind of want to put a label on them which is a bit silly but I can kind of see what I've got so moving down to the next set of drawers these are all of my embellishments so the top drawer here is doodle bug embellishments. So I have buttons, clips, brads, paper clips, um, the little clothes pins and things. All of them are in colour order, so I just have them all in the same insert. These inserts you can buy at the same place um, that you can buy the units from, and I got them from Storage for Crafts. And I've just got little extra clips, and all of that is doodle bug stuff. The next drawer down is more embellishments, so I have quite a lot of wood veneer and chipboard and then I've got some googly eyes and some flair and some jingle bells and things like that. I do tend to try and label everything so I know what manufacturer it is from. Next up is just some extra sort of embellishments, so I've got some action wobbles, some more um, um, chipboard, sorry, trying to think of the word, chipboard letters, some glitter tape at the back and some googly eyes. This one here is rub-ons and stickers, so most of them are Doodlebug um, alphabet, so a lot of Doodlebug alphabet rub-ons, and I've got some Tim Holtz rub-ons, and a lot of these stickers here are also Doodlebug alphabets, and I've got a few Doodlebug sort of image stickers and some other type of alphabets, some thickers and things, and some Doodle Pops. Um, this drawer here is all of my sequins and smaller embellishments. Again, I do have a separate video on this, so I will link that down below. But these are in um, Elizabeth Ward containers, and I just label them at the bottom. And they're really helpful just to grab, and obviously you can see all the different colours because they're see-through. And then I just have extra embellishments here, like um, some beads and then also jewels and things like that from Lucy's cards. And these are all mixes. And then I just have a little um, bead container, which is really helpful to kind of like funnel in the sequins. Next up is all my felt, so I keep it in rolled, um, like from Pepitra Ink they come in rolls and so I just keep them in the rolls and then for that I just um, printed out some labels because they don't come with labels because they're in bags but I prefer to take them out of the bag so that they fit in the drawer a little bit easier and then I've just got some tailored expressions ones as well. So that's all in there and I can't get that in <laughs> now. Um, this is all my glitters, so I have doodlebug glitters and I just have them stored upside down again so that I can see the colour quite easily. I've got the Nouveau, um, what are they called, sparkle dust, I really really like those and then some distress glitter there. This drawer here is all buttons. I haven't used buttons on cards for quite a long time, but I really still like using them for packaging and things like that and um, felt kind of plushies and things. So I have them in these containers here. I got these from Paper Tree Ink. I believe Simon's and Stamp carried them for a while, but I'm not sure if they still do. But I keep them in colour order and just have lots of different manufacturers' buttons together. Um, a lot of them are Paper Tree Ink. And I've got some a few Paper Tree Ink mixes that I wanted to sort of keep separately and some doodle buttons there this is all my bling um, so I do keep them in the original packaging a lot of them are doodle bugs so I have all my doodle bug sprinkles and I have the matte version and the um, kind of like the shiny version if that's the word and then I have like pearls and rhinestones and things like that I absolutely love doodle bug embellishments so that's why I have a lot of them and then these are more doodle bug um, enamel and sprinkles and things like that um, here are arts, um, rhinestones and pearls, and then um, there's another Hero Arts one here, and then just some other manufacturers of um, enamel dots. 
And then right at the bottom, I have all of my paper tray ink ribbon. Again, I don't tend to use it on cards, but I really like using it on packaging and things like that. And there's some twine there. This is all doodabog twine and then a few different other sort of twines there at the back. I like to keep the um, ribbon on rolls if I can. And then last but not least, to the side of that unit, I have my drafting table or drawing board. I really like this. You can pop this on the desk and it sort of saves your neck and your back if you're going to be colouring for a while. That's what I use it for anyway. And then I just have my tripod. And then on the back of the door, I just have my aprons that I use if I'm doing something that's going to be really sort of messy or anything like that. I just have those up there and then again, they're stuck um, on there with a 3M command hook. So that was a look at my craft room for 2017. I hope you've enjoyed watching. I will have links to all of the products that I can possibly link to down in the description bar on YouTube. But I will have a coordinating blog post as well, which I will link to in the description bar on YouTube. Um, and they will have pictures and things like that um, and links to everything that I can link to. But obviously, like I said, some of the items have been discontinued. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.